As I said in my previous video, I want to get back to doing client work and this time I want to be prepared better. That means that these weeks I'm thinking about how I'm going to approach it. What pricing am I going to use? What maintenance packages? What kind of focus? And then all of a sudden Elementor launched their new image optimizer plugin. So when I was preparing for my new agency, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this seriously. So I dove into the world of image optimization because there are quite a few options as you can see many of them have free options but there are also many paid options i tested around six of them and the elementor one as well and in this video i'm going to show you how the elementor one works because it's actually pretty good and i'm going to share my opinion on who i think this product is for and who it's not for before we get started, I want to say a few things. First of all, is that WordPress itself already has a resizing feature, which also does a little bit of compression. So here I am on a fresh WordPress install with almost nothing on it. And here I have a massive image of 8,000 by 5,000 pixels. If you just upload that on WordPress with no optimization plugin installed, WordPress will automatically scale it down to 2560 pixels at maximum therefore decreasing its file size a lot making this image go from 7 megabytes to almost 300 so that's already great for big images but if the image is below that number for example this image which doesn't reach the 2500 pixels but is a massive size four and a half megabytes then wordpress does nothing and it keeps the image four megabytes the second thing that i want to say is that i am a fan of compressing and resizing before you even upload it to wordpress so without using a plugin because every extra plugin on your website adds a little bit more weight so when i am building a website i often use a website like this which already has resizing and compression built in making it really easily to convert images and this works really well but the problem is that after you deliver your website you want to give your client the freedom to sometimes update an image but your clients don't use these kind of websites and of course you can teach them but most of them will probably don't do it and then they will upload big images to their website and then it's going to make your whole website slow which is not great so if you know that your client will never touch the website and only trust you with it, then I would not recommend using any of these plugins at all. But if that's not the case, then a plugin like this is a lot easier for them than trying to explain them how they can resize and compress their images. I also want to say that in the past, I did not know about the new format web P, which is an image format created by Google, which is even better than JPEG in terms of compression. It also supports transparency, so you can even convert your PNGs into WebP. Not all browsers support this, but most of them do. So this is now basically the new golden standard for images. I didn't even know this when I created my Elementor Pro course, so I still need to update some episodes. But now that I know this, I wanna use WebP for everything, because as you can see, it is quite a bit smaller than PNGs and JPEGs. And then one last thing that I want to say is that I am aware that there are many free plugins, but I have tested many of them and or they have a limit in terms of uh, megabytes that you can upload. For example, this one has 20 megabytes, which is not a lot. Most of them don't offer the conversion to WebP in the free version or some of them even have traffic limits. So if your website has a lot of traffic, then they limit it somehow, I don't know how. So that leaves some space open in the market for paid products and they're actually quite a lot. And it's not free though, but most of the competition also isn't free. If you want to compress a lot of images on all of your website and use WebP. We're gonna talk about the pricing in a little bit. They do, by the way, also have a free version. So let me show you how it works. It is a separate plugin which you need to download and activate. Once it's activated and you go to your media library, you will need to connect it to your Elementor Pro account. That is by the way the case with many of these plugins. Many of them require you to make an account and then give you an API key so they can count how many images you compress because it's not unlimited with most of them. Same with Elementor, you can easily activate the free trial and once you've set that up, then this is what you see. You see how many images you have left. You see how much you have already saved by using this plugin, which is a pretty cool feature. And they also show you how many of your images are unoptimized. So let's test it. We're gonna download a massive image from somewhere. Here, this one, 8,000 by 6,000 pixels. And then once you drag it in here, it will start converting. But what is it gonna do? Let's take a look at the settings. 
I didn't see an option over here, by the way, to go to the settings. So how you can go there is by going to the plugin section and then clicking on settings over here. So here you have the settings. It's really easy compared to the other plugins. I think the design of this is great in terms of UX. It doesn't have to be fancy, but it just works. It has everything you need. So first of all, you can choose for lossless or lossy compression. Uh, those are kind of like fancy terms for saying lossless is you will not lose a lot of quality. Lossy is more aggressive, but then you're also going to lose some quality. It's not horrible, but when you have big images for like hero sections, then you probably don't want to uh, do lossies. And I found that the lossless compression also is still really good. So I just leave it at lossless. Make sure that this one is on so that all new images will automatically be optimized. And then here you can automatically resize it to a smaller size which is the feature that's already built into WordPress. So if you want to get it even smaller, then you can change this value over here. I think they put it by default at a 1920, but I'm just going to leave it like this because sometimes you need a little bit more than full HD. You can, by the way, turn this feature off in WordPress where it resizes your image down. I will show you that in a minute. Uh, this is any extra data that's hidden inside of your image. For most websites, you don't really need that. I'm not sure if it's good for SEO though. And this one I would definitely leave on because sometimes when the compression is too aggressive or you don't like it, then you can go back to the original. Uh, most of the plugins that I found have this feature. Convert to WebP, obviously, because that's the best format for images. And then file optimization, all sizes. Yeah, and this is where it becomes interesting because we need to talk about the sizes because it seems so weird, right? I upload one image, a big one, that's the size. How do you mean all sizes? But WordPress automatically creates multiple sizes of the image. That is what you see over here inside of the Elementor editor. That's why whenever you use an image widget, you always have these sizes over here. If you've installed uh, WooCommerce, you even have more sizes over here. But each of these sizes count as one compression or as they say it, a credit. This is the case for the competitors as well. So you think you're uploading one image, but it's actually converting five or sometimes even more sizes in the background, eating away your credits. So now I wanna show you what you can do about that because I found a plugin that is called Disable Media Sizes, where you can disable all of the sizes that WordPress creates. You can actually disable all of them if you want to. So what happens when you have this on and you don't have an optimizer plugin? So let me even turn off the Elementor one. And then you upload an image to the media library. So this 8,000 uh, pixel one. What happens is that it sticks to the size. Sometimes that's what you need. I mean, 8,600, that is outrageous. You will never need that. But sometimes you have a website for a photographer, for example, and he wants really sharp images. I mean, don't go to 8,000, but maybe like 4,000. I know some people will now think I'm crazy, but <laughs> some photographers want like very sharp pictures, right? So you can then leave it at 4,000 by using a plugin like this and then only compress the size and then inside of your optimizer plugin, just disable this so that it doesn't resize the images, but it only compresses it. But let me say it again, only do this when your client really cares about sharp images, because this is sharp enough for almost all websites. Okay, <laughs> but I just wanted to show that that's possible. Another benefit of using a plugin like this is that it doesn't create all of those versions, therefore not eating away your credits. So now let's go to my media. You now can see that I still have 246 uh, images left within this free trial. So now if I click on my image and I click on optimize now, okay, now it's done. It says it has saved 4%. But at the same time, it says 6.2 megabytes. The original image was 6.7. So there's something wrong with this calculation. I've had this now for multiple times that this percentage doesn't work. So that's a little bit of feedback for Elementor. From all of the tests I have done, it's probably the opposite. It's, it's that 4% is left. I think so, because let's go and click on refresh on this image. 
And now you will see that it's actually gone from 6.7 megabytes to 250 kilobytes. And it has converted this to WebP. This is very, very, very impressive because I didn't do anything. I just set it up with the basic settings and it's, it's still not super small as you can see, 2560. But I think it's more like 4% is left. Let's try to calculate it. Yeah, exactly. According to my calculation, 4% is left. So the overall saving, it should say 96%. Okay, but nevertheless, really great result. And now it has only eaten away one of my credits because this one said uh, 46, if I remember correctly. And that is because of this plugin, I disabled all of the other versions. I honestly don't know why WordPress does this. Well, I do know because WordPress is a blogging platform. And back in the day, you would need many different uh, sizes. You would need one for your featured image, for your big image, whatever. But many websites on WordPress are not just blogs. So, so I just don't know why WordPress still does this. I am also aware that you can turn these values to zero inside of the WordPress settings without a plugin like this and that does the same, but it only removes three sizes. Sometimes you have more and that then eats away your credit. So that's why I like to use a plugin like this. I know you can also use PHP code snippet, but I like to not use code. Uh, I know it adds an extra plugin. I know, guys. <laughs> but at least it doesn't eat away my credits. And I don't think this plugin is that bad. I hope I'm not giving the wrong advice here. Um, but if you think so, then let me know. Oh, and there's one more thing that I like to say. And that is that with every image you upload right now that isn't optimized in the way the Elementor likes it, you will get this message. Get a performance boost and improved SEO results with the image optimizer, which is quite annoying because this is just an ad for their optimizer plugin. If you click on install now, then it will install their plugin. So only when you activate the plugin, then that message will go away. They also now have a message about an alt text, which is good for SEO, but not every website needs SEO. But that's besides the point of this video. The most annoying thing is this. I mean, here I have a super well optimized image. Look at this. It's already WebP and it's 226 kilobytes. I know it's 2500 pixels, but this is super well optimized for a big image. And it still tells me that it can be better with their plugin. So I am quite annoyed by this and I really think they should delete this. So that being said, I am impressed by how good the compression is. So let's go to the pricing because it's not as easy as it looks. They have three pricing models. First, I want to talk a little bit about the price itself, because uh, when I first saw this, I was like, why is this not just included in the Elementor Pro subscription? Well, some part in me still thinks that because we're already paying for it, right? But when I started to look at the competition, I soon realized that all of the great ones cost around $20 a month. If you want to get it for unlimited sites, uh, unlimited optimization, there are even ones that are more expensive, but many of them are around $20. Another one is uh, tinypng.com. They also have a WordPress version. If you want to have the converter to WebP, then you will have to pay this per year, which is a little cheaper. It's around 12. So in terms of pricing, Elementor is kind of okay, but they don't offer an unlimited plan. I'm not sure why. It is one subscription for all your Elementor websites, so not per website, but, but, big but, this image credits is per year. Most of the other plugins are per month. So in terms of how much credits you get for the money, Elementor is not the best but their compression is really good. And I think that most people will never reach that number anyways. But I do want to give you a fair comparison. Here it also explains it that almost always one image is five credits because WordPress automatically creates all of those versions. But you know, be smart with a plugin like that. So let's try to get to a conclusion. Do you need this for your agency? Because it's another subscription that you need to add to your billing. And my answer is, it depends. It depends how much you care about page speed 
you could argue that if you care a lot about page speed that you would uh, hand code the website yourself or go to another builder but if you want to stick to elementor and you want a good compression plugin then it is a good option i'm actually thinking about doing it myself i don't want to pay this money i'm just going to include it in my maintenance packages for when i'm going to start client work again maybe i'm just going to buy this package for all of my clients and just install it on every website so that I never have to worry about it again. By the way, I want to document the whole journey of me uh, restarting my agency or my web design services. So I will talk about my maintenance, my new maintenance packages soon. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to plant that idea in your head. You don't have to pay for it yourself if you charge uh, 20 euros per month to your clients, to each client, then you can just deliver this as a service. And then you have a really solid option. So you can also sell this as an optional part to your client. Be like, okay, this is the standard fee. If you want even better speed, then you will get an image optimizer and you, you can also pay for a speed optimizer plugin and just make a speed package for your client. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. But if you don't want to spend any money, then you can just also uh, use a free plugin that doesn't convert to WebP, but does convert uh, JPEG images, for example. The one I have promoted for many years is Resmush Image Optimizer. This conversion is not as great as the Elementor one, but it is free, but it doesn't do WebP, for example. Or this one called Smush, which also offers compression for free, up to 5 megabytes in size, but it's also forever. No limits or anything. So let's get to the final conclusion now. If your agency already is making quite some money and you don't really care adding a few euros or dollars per month to your bill and you just want a convenient, good compression plugin, then I recommend this one. If you're just starting out, then maybe this step is a little bit too big. So I think it's more for people that already have the expert or the agency plan. They don't want to think about anything. They just want the best compression, what you can get within Elementor. I think it's fair to say that that is what they're offering. I think that's the general concept with the new products anyways. It's not super cheap in the same way as the, the hosting. It's not the cheapest hosting you can find, but it's more like convenient that it's all from the same company. And some people just like that. Personally, if I was Elementor, then I would maybe just include it in the expert and agency plans. Maybe that could be a reason for people to upgrade to a bigger Elementor Pro package. I think that would keep their current customers a little bit more happy. And that is something I think the Elementor brand needs. Okay, that's my conclusion. What do you think? Let me know in the comments and in the upcoming videos, I am going to start up my agency together with you. Okay, guys. See you later.